I'm Marty, and now we have ascended to the rim of the big quarry, and I'm standing on one of the rocks that was left here after they discontinued quarrying this operation. Behind me is this wonderful overlook of the quarry. You can see the density of eastern red cedar trees look like big Christmas trees scattered throughout there. An occasional pine tree, which is somewhat anomalous since they don't really like limestone. A remnant population of mimosa down in here. And you can see the ridge line of the mountain going out to the fire tower descending down to Gray Fox Gap and reascending along the ridge up that way toward Hawksview Overlook. Red, uh, Ruffner Mountain is a peak of Red Mountain named in honor of a Virginia geologist named William Henry Ruffner who came through at the bequest of the Georgia Pacific Railroad in the early 1880s to tell them what was along their railroad lines and lands stretching from Georgia through Mississippi. Ruffner, this area is not on their lands and in that report Ruffner mentioned that there were some very interesting looking rocks about six miles east of Birmingham and that if somebody was of a mind to they could make some money mining those rocks. Well, the Ellen Railroad got together with James Withers Sloss, a North Alabama businessman who had come down here and had started the blast furnaces at about that same time. And the Ellen fronted him the money so that he would start mining out here with, of course, the understanding that the LNN would be carrying his rocks, his ore, down to the furnaces. They obviously wanted the revenue stream of transporting rock. So that's how all this came to be. Quarry operations were somewhat under the control of his son-in-law, but almost 100% of it went up until 1908 to the metallurgical use in the blast furnace where it was combined with the iron ore that was also mined here at Ruffner and with a third product called coke which is coal that's been converted to almost pure carbon by burning it in a low oxygen environment. There is absolutely no coal on Red Mountain but there's lots of coal nearby Birmingham. The Cahaba coal fields stretch down from roughly Odenville on through Helena down to West Blockton and the warrior coal fields which are an even superior grade of coal out toward Jasper were found oh roughly all at the same time and that coal was taken by the same railroad to the beehive coke ovens in Birmingham, Alabama had oh some 8,000 to 10,000 of these beehive coke ovens and converted to coke. You can still see those beehive coke ovens at the West Blockton Coke Ovens Park. It's a marvelous place to go visit, marvelous boardwalk, very close right around the corner from the Cahaba River National Wildlife Refuge where the Cahaba lilies grow. These three ingredients were found in such close proximity in the Birmingham area that Birmingham became an iron-making city. It is true that some steel was made here, but not really very much. Most of it was made into iron. Our ore has phosphorus in it, which kept it from being suitable for making steel. It makes it long and stringy. And the northern iron industry, steel, excuse me, the northern steel industry tried to suppress 
the competition from the southern steel industry. But Alabama still makes an awful lot of iron products. We have three iron pipe manufacturers here. McWayne, which has been out of service for the past couple of years, but until then, along with a SIPCO and U.S. Pipe, were making iron pipe. Nowadays, I make most of it out of scrap steel rather than ore, but during the period that we're making all these iron products, including skillets, radiators, manhole covers, what have you, out of the ore that they were mining off of Red Mountain. At that point in history, Red Mountain had a higher density of mining than anywhere in the United States. It's just riddled with iron mines that were extracting the ore. And those mines stretch from northeast of us, Aniana, down southwest of us, oh, Bessemer area, through the current Red Mountain Park where you can also see lots of evidence of the iron mining that was going on during the period and even after they discontinued mining at Ruffner, which was in the late 40s, early 50s here. The iron ore, the limestone, and the coke are put into the blast furnaces, then a huge amount of hot air is forced through this, and the iron is separated from the ore and sinks to the bottom of the furnace while the impurities are united with the limestone to form a product, a byproduct called slag. And slag has all kinds of uses because there was so much of it, uh, people figured out how to exploit the uses of it. At one point, Sloss was selling their slag for a cent and a half a ton. Okay, so if somebody figured out how to do it, the biggest of those companies was the Birmingham Slag Company. And in the early 50s, that evolved into a Fortune 500 company headquartered here in Birmingham, Vulcan Materials.